Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platform in Unity. In this series, we will be making a game similar to this Super Mario Brothers here, which I created in Unity. In this video, we will be learning a little bit about Unity and how to make our first game objects. Let's get started. So we're going to create our first game object, and it's going to be our little character here. We're going to go up to the hierarchy window, and we're going to right click and we're going to go down to create empty and now we have created an empty game object and we're going to call this empty game object well i'm going to call it bobbio and now the thing to understand is that there's this little drop down arrow this means that all our objects right here are in this scene right here and when you see this little star it also means nothing's been saved so you can right click on file and hit save and now everything in this scene is saved so just like our main camera our game object by default comes with a transform and if I were to go here, over here, we could see this is where our game object is. I'm going to click right here up onto this arrow, the set of arrows. This is called the move tool. And there's a couple different ways to move this. There's actually one called the rotate tool. I can actually rotate this object uh, left and right. I'll actually do that when we get the sprite on. But let's just go to the move tool for a second. And now we can see that there's two green arrows here. This is our X. Our, excuse me, the green one is our Y direction and the red one is our X direction or horizontal and vertical directions. If I were to go up here and click 2D, however, you can see we got another one. This is the a blue arrow here and that's our Z direction. And that is going in and out of the scene. In fact, if I highlight, here's my camera right now and that's it's pointing at our screen right now. If I were to zoom out with my... Uh, if I were to zoom out, you can see the, the direct, excuse me, the direction the camera is pointed in. Let's just, and if you, if I were to double click on this, it will take me right to the object. And then I could just click on the Fabio right here, and this is where he's at. So the camera is pointed at our game object. Now our game object is an empty object. There's, there's nothing there. Actually, I'm going to click 2D again. And then I'm going to click on the arrow so we can see where it's at. All right, there's nothing there. It's just a game object, but it's empty. I mean, it has a transform on it. We can move it around. But for all intents and purposes, there's nothing there yet because we haven't added anything to it. So with this transform here, we can position this. We, If I were to take this red arrow and I would click on it, we can move it. And if you look up here, it's moving in, a, in the X direction or the horizontal direction. If I were to go here up and down, we can see it moved in the Y direction. If I were to take our rotational here, I can turn it like so, and then I can have our arrow here, and you can see it rotated. Now our arrow is in a, a different spot, and we rotated it in the Z direction, even though it's, it, you know, that in and out direction. This is the axis about which it rotated. Actually, I'm going to go back, and you can highlight these and just put the number right in there. You don't have to drag the arrows. And another way you can move things also, if you go over this X right here, you mouse over it, you can see those two arrows. You can move things when those two arrows appear. Now, just to start off, we're going to actually just center our game object. I'm going to put them at 0, 0, 0, and 0 to start with. Oh, and the last thing here is scale. And I probably can't change the scale of an empty game object. I guess I can. Uh, game object. And the scale is a, it's a 1 to 1 to 1 scale. And you can change this to make objects bigger. You don't want to so much get in the habit of changing objects in the scale area. You can sometimes because it might mess with the uh, visualization of the pixels. So as I said earlier, game objects come with components. Each one comes with this transform, com excuse me, transform component. The camera comes with a camera component because you can have many different cameras or add cameras to different things. And it comes with an audio listener component in our empty game object here. Our player, he only has one component. We can actually add components by hitting this add component button. And in it, we can type in the things we're looking for. So the first one we're going to be looking for is called a sprite renderer. So it's right here as I started typing and started showing it. I'm going to double click on it. So right here we have a sprite renderer and here it says sprite. It has a place for the sprite we're going to use. This is going to be our sprite right here. Uh, and actually, let's just go ahead and put that in there. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to drag it over and you're going to see the plus sign. And there is actually, let's move them. There's Super Fabio, but he's quite small. It's quite small because if I click on here, you'll see that he's a, he's a three, excuse me, a 32 by 42 
a little character there. So I actually want to maybe change his pixels per unit. Let's go with 32. And then I'm just changing the pixels per unit, excuse me, pixels per unit, and this should make him larger. And I hit apply and boom, he got a little larger there. So, and likewise, the larger the number I put here was at 100, it could be smaller also. I can put 64, depending on how large or small I want them. I think I'm going to leave them at 32, since that is the um, 32 by 44 pixels per unit is what this was created as. And I believe this is 32 by 32 is a block. So anyway, uh, now we have, let me go back to Fabio here. Now we have a sprite onto our character here and actually if i click this i can flip them either way if i click this y i can flip them upside down depending on how i want to uh to position him um right now we're going to leave all the other things alone we're probably not going to mess with these at all you know whether we want to sort them at different points or pivot him one thing we will be doing later but i'm not going to go into too much detail now is we're going to have sorting layers. Different things have different layers sometimes. So one thing can appear in front of the other. They'll be in layers. Actually, they won't appear to be in front of the other. They will be in one in front of the other because we're going to put them in layers. So anyway, we have this sprite renderer right here. And if I were to push play, absolutely nothing's going to happen because there's nothing to be done. We can't control them or anything. But we are going to add a couple more components to them. The first component we're going to add to them is we're going to add a box collider to them. So I'm going to type box collider, O-L-I-D-R. And right here is what I want a box collider 2D. Now, as you can see, the minute I did that, there's this green box around him. And that's his box collider. That's what's going to actually cause things to bump into him and make him appear solid. Well, actually, right now he can appear solid, but there's different types of box colliders. Like, I can also use it as a trigger for things, and I would set this as a trigger here if I were doing that. But as again, if I hit play, nothing happens. He just sits there because he is just a sprite with a collider around him. He, he doesn't really have any physics around him. Also, with the collider, I can actually, we can size it. You know, it says 1 by 1.37. If I wanted, I can make it bigger or smaller. And this would essentially also be his hitbox when he comes into contact with things. Sometimes you want to shrink and lower the hitbox. I'm just going to leave it at one. You can also offset colliders for different reasons. And we will be working with that too. We can move them over this way and that. And we can move them. Move, oops. Move the collider up and down. And I can do it in the same way as I move things with the positioning my mouse over the arrows like this. I'm just going to go back to put it at zero and zero. Usually when you add the box collider in Unity, it will size it to your sprite automatically, but you can fix it uh, or you can change it or adjust it from there. And so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add one more component and it's going to be called a rigid body 2D. So every time we pushed on play, Mario did nothing, but now his rigid body is what gives him physics. So... Just to understand the difference, the box collider is going to give him this box for things to collide into, but without physics. The rigid body 2D gives him physics. It gives him all these things right here. It gives him mass and gravity. And if I were to hit this right here and hit play, you're going to see that he actually just falls off our screen. If I were to go up here, he's just going to continue to fall because now he has a rigid body. Now he has physics around him for us to use in terms of making him move and jump and all the other things we want with our platformer. Uh, he's also a dynamic rigid body. We'll be using other rigid bodies. You know, dynamic means he will move. Kinematic and static are different uh, physical concepts that will, if I probably hit static and hit play, I believe he'll just stay there again because he's now a static object. He's, he's a rigid body with physics. He could probably be pushed around if there's another object in there, but He's just really static right now, but we're going to go back to making him a dynamic object. And we'll be actually using some of these other things. Actually, we're going to be going right here to use this one, his constraints. So we we want him to be to move in the X and Y direction. So we don't want to touch these, but we don't want him rolling around. If we were to, if we were to leave this and he would hit something, he would just spin. We're going to click on Z to make sure he doesn't spin. So that's where we're going to stop today. In the next video, we're going to use this block and give Super Fabio a little ground to stand on. So as always, thank you for watching. 
like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And a big special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. All links are in the description below. See you next time.